Hi everyone, my name is Adrian and I'm going to talk about uh, Sysmo today, Sysmo Connect, the history we had starting with ZK badges and then uh, this Sysmo Connect that is a crypto native SSO that is built with zero knowledge proofs. So as an introduction, let's talk a bit about identity and what we're trying to do here with Sysmo. Uh, in real life, the, the, the way you share data is, uh, is really sovereign, meaning that you have a professional life, you have some uh, family memories and, and some things that you do in your family, same with your friends, and you have the ability, depending on the context, to choose actually what you reveal. So with your boss, you, must, you, you might just share things about your professional life, maybe one or two things about your private life, but you don't want to share everything. Uh, similarly, with your grandma, you might want to share more, but again, you won't share everything. And that might be with your best friend that you, you are more entitled to to share uh, more, but what I want to say uh, with this is that it's really uh, natural to human to do things uh, in different contexts and then share what they want. And we'll see that in the digital world, we don't have this property at all, and that's the core of what we're trying to do at Sysmo, want to make the digital world uh, more natural to humans and give us this ability. So in Web2, how it works, the data is not ours. So it's it's uh, in Web2 servers, so you interact with Twitter, you interact on LinkedIn, you interact on Google and Facebook, and then you create uh, siloed data that you can't really share. Actually, you can share them a bit, but you need to ask permission. And also, they can share it without your consent. So it's really different from uh, the real life, and it's because uh, we, need, we needed centralization, but now we, we no longer. So when you use something like Google Connect, when you're getting into a new context, so let's say uh, an application with friends, you might want to share things from Twitter, Facebook, and Google, uh, a bit like in the real life, but you're not able to because basically first they don't want you to, so they let you share just a piece of data, your email or some, some small things, uh, but that's all. Now we, in Web3, we could think that uh, it's better because we own our data. So this time it's better, we are, uh, on the forefront of the identity, we own our wallets and then we bring our identity to applications. So that's already way better. Uh, and the way we do so is that from our wallets, we can uh, reveal our wallet to an application. We do, so, we do so with signatures. So if we're using a non-chain app, so a smart contract, we send a transaction. And by sending a transaction, the smart contract knows, oh, message sender is this wallet, so I know that all the data that is in the wallet, I'm aware of this. So in Web3, you're able to share your entire wallet, so data is no longer trapped into uh, servers, um, and you can bring it to an app. So I can bring my, let's say, 0x1, that is my public wallet, my ENS, daydream.eth, and I'm able to connect to, uh, let's say, Lens or Farcaster with it, bringing my uh, yeah, public profile. I, I'm also able to choose another wallet, let's say uh, 0x2, that's my private wallet with all my NFTs, all my, my uh, net worth, and I'm able to use, let's say, Uniswap with this. Um, and yeah, again, I'm able to bring all my assets that are not trapped into servers or stuff like that. I'm actually also able to aggregate my data, meaning that I can actually sign two messages, one from my first wallet, my public, one from my private one, and I'm able to bring it to an app by the way, it can be on-chain or off-chain. You just need to verify the signature to know that uh, I'm the owner of those wallets. But here in Web3, the issue is that you either bring it all or nothing. Uh, let's say that I just want to bring to my Lens profile some data about my private wallet. I'm not able to do that because in Web3 today, whether it's on-chain or off-chain, we bring our entire wallets with it. So it's a bit like in real life. Uh, you are only allowed to share things about your personal life to work if you, if you share it all. So it doesn't work either. We, we recreated the same silos, and the conclusion of this is that we have one, one wallet for this type of use case, one wallet for the other one. So with Sysmo, what we allow you to do, we have this data vault. It's like an identity aggregator before. We'll go get into that. But you are able to, with DK proofs, actually pick exactly what you want to do from your aggregated data. So we're able to aggregate all your data and then selectively reveal to the application, oh, it's a social app, I want to pick this from that wallet, reveal this from that wallet, this from that wallet. So that's really what we're trying to do at Sysmo and make it available for, for, for all devs. So first, there's one part, the identity aggregation. 
in this model you have what we call a data vault. It's like a wallet, an identity wallet, um, on which you will uh, aggregate all your accounts, so your, your wallets, your Twitter, your GitHub, your Telegram. And once it's imported in your vault, you're able to generate ZK proofs uh, of granular data that are uh, part of, of those identities. Um, and then this ZK proof will be sent to an app that will verify it, and then it is convinced, okay, this, this one is a NFT owner of a, of a noun, this one has voted in a DAO, stuff like that. So just a bit of technical, I, I won't spend much time on it, but the data vault is like a wallet, it has a seed, it's called the vault secret, and the way you do ZK proofs with other wallets that are external, you map them to this data vault. So what you do is that when you're importing a wallet or an account in Sysmo, you map it to your vault. So here I'm uh, mapping, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a link, of course private and sovereign, only, only me can see this, no Sysmo, no no one. I'm saying, okay, daydream.is is now inside this vault, uh, my private wallet also, and my Twitter is here. Only me see this aggregated view, only me see this, and from that point on, my accounts are ZKified. I'm able to generate ZK, proof, ZK proofs out of them. Uh, the way it really works is that actually I will be able now, from now on, by proving the knowledge of the secret of the vault, I'll be able to prove the ownership of each wallet that has been imported. So that's the basic uh, ZK idea in Sysmo, is that you import your accounts in your data vault, and then you prove that you know the vault secret, and that actually is proving that uh, you own all, all accounts. <laughs> so yes, so in your vault, ZK proofs from this vault secret, you send it to an application that verifies these ZK proofs. So again, our mission is really to create a new design space for our application builders so that they can finally leverage your aggregated data in a sovereign way. Uh, and this is used especially for access control. Let's say that you want to create an airdrop that is gated uh, to uh, data that is both private and public. Let's say, okay, I want to get this airdrop to people that interacted a lot with uh, Polygon and it shows like usage. This usually happens on private wallets. And at the tem same time, I want to get their airdrop to, some, to, to people that have an INS or a Gitcoin passport that is usually on public wallets. Uh, we want to give you this ability. Similarly, reputation, you can think about credit scores and under collateralized loans that benefit from this aggregation property uh, that needs privacy is that, okay, I want to create a platform under collateralized and to get a better interest rate, you need to prove me, okay, financial data, but also social data. And so we are tool to let you leverage this, uh, yeah, aggregated data. So now a bit about the story, how it started. L last year we released the ZK badges. Um, so basically you take a proof Let's say a proof that I'm uh, I voted in the NS DAO. We create so I import my account in my vault. I create a zk proof, and then I get this tokenized attestation that is a ERC eleven fifty five NFT. It's non transferable, and so when I have this NFT, that means that I was able to generate a zk proof, and so that means that I'm a ENS voter. Uh, so yeah, we, we were super happy to release this for our last last ATC. Uh, we had. Uh, more than 50k users, uh, they enjoyed it. But we'll see in this talk that, that we want to do more with Sysmo Connect, we want to, to do more. So last technical things. Uh, so when I say uh, I'm able to prove that I voted on ENSDAO, how it works. We create a data group of all people, of all wallets that voted in ENSDAO. So here you can see a list of wallets, it's just a small part of it. And you can see that I'm part of it. You see daydream.sysmo.eth with a value 17, and the value corresponds to the number of votes that I submitted. So now, since I imported daydream.eth to my vault, I'm able to prove that uh, I'm part of this group, and that I voted more than five times, more than 10 times, that I voted exactly 17 times. And so that's the ZK proof that we are actually doing uh, uh, in Sysmo. So we could have like many other groups here. It's the, the minters of a uh, stain with crypto NFT that was released by Coinbase. And here, interestingly, it's a hybrid data group, our Sysmo community data group. All people that use Sysmo are helped us build it. And you can see that we have in this group some Twitter accounts, some Telegram, some GitHub, some uh, wallets. And each of these wallets 
or te Twitter or Telegram, in their vaults will be able to prove, hey, I'm a Sysmo community member. So the ZK batch minting, how it works happens, it's done by a ZK tester. It's a smart contract that verifies the ZK proof that you generated. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about the ZK proof first. So the ZK proof is really, okay, I know the vault secret, so uh, I'm the owner of daydream.eth because it, it has been created, it, there was a link that was created between daydream.eth and this vault secret. This link is private, only me can see it, but I'm able to prove it. So I'm able to prove, okay, I own daydream.eth. Then as the group was put in a Merkle tree, I'm able to give, by the way, daydream.eth is part of the group. I bring the Merkle pass. And you'll see that I generate a vault ID. It's a hash of vault secret and ENS voter group ID. It will allow me to nullify uh, this. So the ZK attester, what it does, okay, I verify the ZK proof. I know that the ZK proof was created by this vault ID. It's a unique anonymous identifier of my vault. And for this group ID, that is the ENS uh, group. So uh, the attester smart contract verified this. Okay, that went well. And so I mint the, uh, the attester, mint the ENS, the ZK badge. That represents, in the end, this group membership. And high level, it represents just that I voted on ENS DAO. And during the process, Neither the do not is revealed, neither, neither my vault secret, nothing can be learned. There's just as an output this vault identifier that is used as a, as a way to make sure, okay, this vault ID, I store it, and I cannot accept uh, another time a ZK proof from it. So I can just mint one ZK badge uh, per vault or per uh, address that is eligible. So that's the, that's the technical view of ZK badges. And so we, we get a, a, quite a lot of learnings with it. Uh, First, we know that it's really great to curate your permanent identities. So it's great if I want, if I have, let's say, two public identities, one that is doxed, daydream.eth, and another one that is my unknown Twitter account, where I should post. Maybe I want to prove uh, on my unknown.eth that uh, I have some reputation from my public profile and uh, reverse. So here, I can bring on another.eth, hey, I'm an ENS DAO voter. Without them knowing anything more than I voted on in SAO, on the reverse, I can bring private data from my anon.east. Let's say that I'm big JGN. I can prove on daydream.east that uh, I used, uh, I spent more than uh, 10 ether as gas or something like that. So that's the why the ZK badges are great. Uh, but our mission is more than that. It's more than uh, flexing our ability to curate your identities. We really target app developers so that they can leverage this in their applications as access control. So let's think about a voting application um, that say, okay, I want uh, voters of my voting system to only be allowed to vote if they proved that they voted on ENS. But I want it privacy preserving. Uh, I don't want to know who they are exactly. So here, since we minted the ZK badge of the ENS DAO voter on anon.eth, and this doesn't reveal any more than I'm a voter. I can connect uh, to this voting system with anon.is. It checks, okay, you have the badge, so it's good. I give you access to the vote. You can vote. But this is very limited, actually, because badges cannot be really reused across apps. For instance, let's say that there is an NFT airdrop, but this time uh, it's exactly the same, uh, gated to ENS voters. But I want to receive the airdrop on my daydream.is because it's my public profile. This I cannot do because, as we said, you can only mint one ZK badge. So, yeah, that's the issue is that a ZK badge or even all attestations that are written, they are tied to one wallet. And so if you want to use this piece of information in several apps, you'll need to always connect with the same wallet. But that's, that's really, really limited. Uh, actually, you might want to, yeah, with the identity, I want to access this app with a new, fresh wallet, another app or with my unknown uh, identity to this app. So that's uh, one of the limitations. Of course, this, uh, the, this, the other limitation of re writing the attestations is that they are written in a database. Here it was mainnet. And so if I want to vote on optimism with anon.eth, I don't have the badge. So I need to first mean the badge, then access the app. So all of this uh, made us understood what applications really need. 
uh, what they really need is the ability to do what, like our ZK tester does. Just, okay, I get a ZK proof. It's a ZK proof that uh, it's a ENS DAO voter. I verify it and then I get access to my app. And there's no badge involved, it's just off-chain users in there that have all the generated ZK proof and I'm able to verify it. So the voting app, it's okay, give me the proof. Okay, I register your vote. Airdrop, it's okay, give me this proof. I give you tokens. You can also think about off-chain apps like a Discord bot. Give me this proof, I add you to a private channel. And so if you think about it, what applications really need, it's at execution time, when they need the check, so it's when an action occurs, the voting, the, the airdrop or the bot, they need to have access to a proof and a way to verify it. And this is way more scalable because the proof is off-chain, you can send it anywhere. So you don't need to mint a badge or anything, it's off-chain, uh, as a user I can send it anywhere, in a backend, in, a, in any chain. And the verifier function, it's either a library on Solidity that is deployed or a TypeScript, TypeScript package, for instance. So if we think again, uh, the airdrop, how it would work, um, it's okay, I get the ZK proof. First, I verify the ZK proof through the Sysmo Connect uh, Solidity library, and then uh, I send the token. Are the things that then I store the nullifier, that is the hash of the vault secret, app ID and group ID. And here what is powerful is that the nullifier depends on the app. So here it's linked to the airdrop app. And so if I do exactly the same ZK proof, but for another, another app, let's say this time a voting app, my nullifier is different. The nullifier again is the thing that you store to make sure that a user cannot bring it, uh, use the ZK proof twice. Here, the nullifier is different across apps. So you can, from the same data, daydream.eth, with my vault, I can access an on-chain app as an anon, this time as a daydream.eth or with a new wallet. And nobody will be able to infer that it's the same users that use all these apps. Of course, they cannot uh, know that it's daydream.eth, but uh, that makes it very scalable and you can just, okay. And for my app, I need this ZK proof. I verify it wherever I want and I store this uh, nullifier that doesn't dox anything. So that's the the big value prop that we have uh, in uh, in Sysmo Connect. And so Discord bot is the same. Okay, this time it's a backend. I verify in the backend the ZK proof and I store. Okay, this uh, user cannot join again my my private channel. So now, if you think about it, the ZK badges, the ZK attestor that I presented before, it's just one specific application of this scheme. It's an application that takes a proof and tokenizes it. And so that's why we're saying that now we're trying to move away from ZK badges. We think that it's up to other applications to leverage our tool to build attestation in the standard that they want. Uh, but uh, when you think about projects like Ethereum attestation service or things like that, they could very well, okay, give me this proof and I write an attestation that corresponds to this proof. So now I'll, I'll, I'll present Sysmo Connect uh, at uh, full, it's really simple. So it looks like that. Uh, as an app that I integrated Sysmo Connect, I have in my front end a button, climb with Sysmo. Users are, are redirected to their vault to generate the ZK proof that I, re I requested. And then they verify it on chain or off chain, depending on what app it is. So again, we have the Sysmo vault with my data sources. I'm able to prove anything from it. And I'm able to do two types of ZK proof. One that is not privacy preserving, I can still reveal, okay, I own this Twitter, I own that EVM account, I own that Telegram. So that's not privacy preserving, but that is using ZK proofs. And the other types of requests that you can make as an app developer is like, okay, prove me that you have this NFT, prove me that you voted in this DAO, uh, prove me that you contributed to this GitHub repository, and underlying, actually, we know now that technically, there's a data group, and you prove that you are a member of it. So that's the two types of requests that you can make. And uh, an off-chain integration looks like that. In your front end, you import our library to make uh, a request, and in your backend, you verify it. It's exactly similar to everything that we do today. Today, in an application, you have buttons to send transaction. You have the MetaMask pop-up that say, okay, I send this transaction. Or the, other, the second action is send this message, and MetaMask pop-up send this message. With this more, it's a button, and this time it's Reveal this data, create a ZK proof. So it's exactly the same kind of tool that a wallet connects, but instead of getting the full wallet uh, information, you get just the precise data that you want. And so it enables you to ask many data from many different, 
many different types of wallets, like private, public, uh, many things. So that's the really real power of it. It's not just privacy preserving as an end. It's as a tool to get any data that you want. So again, a button in your front end, you, you request data, and then you verify it on chain or off chain. So it's really simple to integrate, and that's what we want to provide uh, as a team. It's a set of uh, developer-friendly libraries so that in the end, the end goal is that you just say, okay, I want this data, this data. You don't, understand, you don't have to know about groups, about ZK and stuff like that. You just know that you can request any data from your users and that it's safe for them to do so. so and again, that was never possible before, this kind of technologies, uh, because before, when you ask data on digital, what you were doing is like, I have access to the database and I can see it all. Here it's really, okay, prove me that you used to own a local cache, but I don't know who you are. So that's uh, the thing we can do also on chain. So it's the same thing. Okay, uh, I request this data. You get, give me a ZK proof. I verify it on chain. Uh, I just share one case study that we did with ACI. Uh, ACI, it's a big delegate of Ave. And here the app was, okay, prove me that you delegated to me but I don't want to know your wallet because I want to send you swags, physical address, and of course they didn't want to have access to the link because between a physical address and a wallet that, de that delegated some big amount of Aave, so with some net worth. So they didn't want to create this link. So they say, okay, I request this ZK proof that, do, that you delegated to me, and okay, you generate the ZK proof as a user, and then I verify it, and if it's good, I give you access to a form, to give me your physical address and I'll ship this uh, swag to you. So, yeah, that's it. I, I want, if there's something to remind is that privacy is not only an end. I mean, I mean it's, it would be really cool that the community stops doing NFT, no, NFT ownership check by requesting the entire data that's in the wallet. That's what happens today. They don't need that. If you want to check NFT ownership, just request a ZK proof. So, Privacy is great, but there's so much more. It's, this is like 1%. The, the real power of privacy is to enable developers to access data that was never accessible before because of privacy reasons. And so you are finally able to access, as a developer, the aggregated data from all your users. And so as a user, this time, it's really like in the physical world, oh, I go to this new app, what do I want to bring? Oh, uh, I want to bring that I'm older than 18. I want to to bring that uh, I'm, I have 10K followers on Instagram, I want to bring this, 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 and you pick up what you, you reveal to the app. And that's uh, a big design space, and uh, we're gonna keep building for this. So thank you a lot for, for your attention, and, and we're hiring. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I love the tech. I have question about the adoption, like what's the strategy? I mean, you, you got to convince projects to integrate that button to log in with Sysmo, right? And at the same time, you got to convince users to generate the proofs. What's your, uh, how do you think about how to get enough adoption to make this tech actually apply? Like I would love to uh, ditch guild.xyz for my Discord because it kind of doxes me aggregating all my wallets. But how do you, how do you convince projects to use Sysmo instead of Connect My Wallet or, or Guild? Yeah, with ACI, the delegate, actually it was a, we have a unique value prop and it's 10x better than anything. It will be hard, it will demand a lot of education and hopefully it, it might also need to have some hacks that happen on databases like Guild or stuff like that. Uh, we hope that it doesn't uh, come to this, but we are very long term uh, oriented. So for now our goal is with crypto natives that should be uh, able to more easily see the value prop that we have, that they leverage this. And we already have like in production use case, for instance, the, the swag drop or stuff like that. Um, and just like today, you can use Gitcoin Passport in a privacy preserving way. So we bring civil resistance to any app now. So now it's up to us to make it easy to use and to inspire. And, uh, but we have, I think, we provide a 10x improvement to social apps uh, if they use zero knowledge proofs. Then, it, yeah. Uh, no, the, you do not have any more time for the question, so it's the end of the presentation. Sorry, you have to meet him afterwards. <laughs> <laughs>
थैंक यू गैस